Hi, I'm Josh from Brown Dog Gadgets, and the mystery of the brown dog is the brown dog is at home because the brown dog barks and wiggles way too much to have a dog at the office doing presentations all day. Uh, Springer Spaniel. You can see some photos of the Springer Spaniel on our website as well. He's a pretty fun dog, but way too wiggly for presentations. He'd be everywhere in our photography room. Well, thanks for hanging out with us, especially if you're on the East Coast, because I know it's getting late there. It's late here in Central Time Zone for us. Uh, but I promise you stick around, we'll do some fun stuff and you'll learn a thing or two. So uh, first and foremost, we're doing a presentation on conductive tape. This kind of stuff right here to make this kind of stuff right there. Those are the things that we're doing. So we're gonna be going over a presentation showing a whole bunch of different activities ranging from very simple things up to very advanced things and hopefully introducing you some new ideas and topics and activities and lesson plans you may not have learned about or heard about in the past. So stick around, I can guarantee there's a bunch of fun stuff for everybody. And now I'm gonna share my screen so we can actually look at the presentation I put together. So if you'll bear with me one second. Oh, one thing too, if you have any questions along the way, I'm keeping an eye on the chat to my left over here. Uh, pop them up and I'll try to answer them as I'm going through my presentation. Otherwise I'll answer all the questions I can after uh, my presentation, or you can feel free to email us as well if you have questions after the fact. So uh, on to the presentation. And there we go. That should be shared and we're going to play. Uh, if you can't see this presentation, cannot see it, let me know because uh, I think it's working on our end. So paper circuits. So we're Brown Dog Gadgets. Our website is browndoggadgets.com. Uh, and if you're looking to ever purchase our stuff, you can purchase things th from us or through many of our many, many, many resellers. We sell through tons of educational uh, resellers, library, education catalogs, science catalogs. So if you or your school need to purchase things or want to check our things out, you don't have to purchase it from us. You can check our stuff out all over the place. Uh, so moving on. If you can, because we're really bad at social media, if you can follow us, please do. Uh, we're trying our best at social media these days, and there's three of us around here that are constantly posting projects and activities. So if you like what you see on here, we literally try to post two or three interesting things that we're doing every day, from projects to lesson plans to upcoming activities that we're putting together. And you can also find projects, guides, giveaways, and discounts we'll throw up there as well. So every now and then I throw up a coupon because we care. But please follow us, especially on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, we do try to throw up a lot of stuff on there all the time. And uh, they're not boring. And also anything you see in this presentation, any picture you see, any project you see being thrown up on the screen, there's literally a guide, a step-by-step -step guide, directions, materials, resources on our website for that thing you're seeing. Uh, so if anything, catches your eye, we have those free resources on our website, and most everything has a nice downloadable template and some step-by-step -step directions as well. So one last thing, uh, I keep saying one last thing. One last thing is at the end of this presentation, we're gonna be giving away a bunch of free conductive tape. So if you stick around to the very end, we have uh, 50 free rolls of tape we'll be giving out to people who are watching us. So we'll give you that information on the last slide, uh, but yeah, free tape and free shipping on that tape as well. So it's literally free up and down the line so you can try out our really cool conductive tape. And you're right, Kathy, it is pretty awesome. So moving along, what do we do? Uh, Brown Dog Gadgets, I used to be a middle school teacher. Now we do all sorts of fun hands-on STEM and STEAM projects. What makes us different is we try to focus on the low cost budget level consumable things such as bristle bots doing conductive sewing activities doing paper circuits and doing uh, circuits on lego and that little phone in the bottom right hand corner that's our special lego parts with conductive tape attaching them to other lego parts so we try to stay in that nice budget level activity range which makes us different from a lot of the other stem companies out there selling hardware because uh yeah uh we want to make sure that kids can actually take things home and teachers can actually afford our stuff because I know I was a, a very poor eighth grade middle school science teacher for quite a while. So I know the pain and I know uh, we want to send things home with kids. So why conductive tape? Oh my gosh, conductive tape is the best stuff possible because it's simple. Uh, conductive tape literally just is one of many types of adhesive conductive material. Uh, most people probably have used copper foil tape such as in this picture here. It's been the go-to for years, uh, but there's lots of other options as well. It's really endlessly flexible. You can make simple projects up through advanced projects, do programming, do wearables. It's about as flexible as you can get with material while still being extremely kid friendly, but also it's steam. 
It's also arts and craftsy, which is great for anybody in a classroom who wants to have a fun activity that's not just connect positive to negative LED turns on. I like making squids, so you see a few squids popping up in this presentation because I think they're hilarious and they're color changing. But it's one of many, many things you can make and really it's nice and open-ended for the students. It's also very easy to level. Whether you're a third grade teacher or a high school teacher, it doesn't matter. You can easily level it up for that grade level, for those lesson plans, for that higher level learning with just tweaking some projects and activities. But best of all, it's cost effective. Everything is extremely inexpensive and you can bring in standard parts or really any component you have from cheap LEDs up to Arduinos and micro bits, no problem whatsoever with conductive tape. That is really awesome. It's my favorite thing because it's just so darned expandable. Here's a couple more examples of some conductive tape things we made up. Gosh, these are old because they're using copper foil. And so these are just some holiday things we made up as well as a dinosaur because they're fun. But it really just is as expandable as you want it to be. So let's talk about types of tape because that's been the number one issue I've found over the years is using the right material for the right job. And let's talk about the three most common types of tape. First off, there's your standard copper foil tape, which you'll see on the left-hand side of your screen there. That's what everyone's been using. Copper foil is readily available. A lot of companies still use it. You can find it on Amazon galore, but it has a lot of downsides. It's fragile. It means if you look at it sideways from across the room, it will split in half. It's also a pain to clean up because it's so fragile because it won't come off of hard surfaces. I know this because there's a Christmas tree still on the window of my classroom eight years later. I couldn't get it off with a, uh, with a knife. Just wouldn't come off. It, it's just, it's weak. Now there's also aluminum ductwork tape, which I like using for large activities. You can find that at any Home Depot. Uh, it's just aluminum on a sticky surface. It works pretty well for going long distances, uh, but it's also has a major downside. It's not conductive on the bottom, uh, which can be a major issue for kids. Same with copper foil, typically not conductive on the bottom. So overlapping two pieces does not make a very strong connection. That's really obnoxious to do because, well, Kids don't understand it's not conductive. They should work that way, it makes sense. And it's also that fragileness of it. We developed our own nylon conductive tape that we call maker tape, which is that top right corner. Uh, being a fabric tape, it's pretty much indestructible. You have to really, really, really work at it to break our thin tape. Our quarter inch tape is pretty much impossible to rip by hand unless you're a very strong adult. Uh, it's great because also you can put it onto fabric, uh, shirts, jackets, coats, which you'll see later. Uh, and being a fabric tape, it bends and folds and flexes. It's also extremely easy to use for the kids because of how strong it is. It won't rip on them. They can overlap it because it's conductive on top and bottom and make a strong circuit. And it's also easy to clean up because if I stuck it onto a window or a door or a wall or a person or my dog, it'd peel right back off again because that tape is stronger than the adhesive. So it, that durability, expandability, conductive on top and bottom, and the price point's about the same. Uh, and I find that kids tend to use far less of it. This is why we're giving away a, a lot of this tape so you can try it out, see if you like it or not for yourself, but it just has changed the way we do circuits because it makes everything so much easier. We know it makes things easier because we test the heck out of it. Um, this is a picture of a video we did where we're stress testing our tape. Uh, you can find this on YouTube, uh, but we literally try out this tape in all sorts of weird situations, including throwing three amps at it to see if it'll start on fire or not. Uh, long story short, it doesn't start on fire, it just gets a little hot about three amps, uh, which is way more than any classroom would ever use. So let's talk about simple circuits, because that's what most of us end up doing in a classroom setting. I know if you're fourth grade up through say ninth grade, simple circuitry is kind of where you live in electronics world. So simple circuits, there's all sorts of things you can do, but the reason you want to use conductive tape as opposed to say standard alligator clips is that it's much more visually friendly for kids. Alligator clips tend to make a mess all over the table. They're annoying to troubleshoot and visually, there's just wires going everywhere. If we're making circuits on paper, such as this one right here, it's very easy for us to go back and forth from a diagram to something on paper, flat 2D. You're essentially making circuit boards on paper with tape. And this picture right here shows a wonderful little switch. You just move that paper clip back and forth and it'll light up different LEDs. It also lets students experiment. It's easy, it's inexpensive, and let them make mistakes, let them try things out. I, in my class, used to have kids research a circuit. They make a circuit poster board where they had to make the circuit on the board and then present that to the classroom. There was a nice visual representation of a flashlight circuit, of uh, all sorts of weird things, of switches on walls, of three-way switches. 
having the students do their own research, make their own presentation, and show it off on a poster board was great learning for them because they did all the work on their own. But one thing I really like having kids do is have them make their own tools out of conductive tape. And my go-to thing to have them do is a conductor insulator tester. That's what you see right there in that picture. It literally is an LED, a battery, and we've doubled over some of our maker tape and attached some uh, paper clips at the end of it. They're literally going around the classroom testing out different objects, each other, walls, windows, you name it, and seeing if it's a conductor or an insulator with something that they made themselves and they can explain. And it's that whole ownership of the project. They did it themselves, they can make it, they can replicate it, they can explain it to their fam family and friends, but also they can take it home with them when they're done. Here's a closer picture of this one. I do this one in workshops a lot because it's fun watching a room full of teachers go around and touch each other with uh, paper clips to see if anybody's a conductor or not. It's also one of those projects as well that's uh, impossible to do wrong. And if you do something wrong, just take the LED off, here's some more tape and paper. And by the way, this is literally a project with a diagram on our website and a little lesson plan attached to it as well. So if you're looking for this, it's on our website and you can print those off and use those immediately if you want to. So obviously crafts are a big thing for people to do with uh, paper circuits. It's kind of the go-to thing you see people use on Instagram and Twitter and at teaching conferences, greeting cards being the big one. For instance, this is a greeting card where we shoved an LED into a straw for what we call straw wars because it's hilarious. We have a bunch of these we made up because we were bored one day over the holiday season. Uh, but crafts are a very easy way. It's something that the kids can understand. It lets them again be creative because I like to have the kids pick their own project. We'll use the same batch of materials and have a student pick a dinosaur or a squid or a greeting card. And they choose what they want to do. And it's the same learning objectives for everybody, but the fact that I made a purple Tyrannosaurus and you made a green squid, it doesn't matter. But the learning objectives, the activity, the materials, but it's that nice little bit of ownership where they made the decision, they chose the activity, they picked something that's interesting to them that really helps it shine. Again, here are three things we made up this past year. A Tesla Cybertruck because we were bored. A, we put some LEDs on a pumpkin because we could, and we made a nice little Valentine's Day card. Again, things are on our website as well. But again, you can choose what you want to do. Uh, if you wanna do advanced circuitry with conductive tape, it's also extremely easy to do. Um, so this is a project we just posted this past week where we used a small pre-programmed integrated circuit some LEDs, some tape, and a couple of batteries to make a circuit on acrylic. The idea was to dissect a, a bigger circuitry project and present it in a unique way. This is where you can bring in your standard electronic components, buzzers, motors, LEDs, pretty much any part you might have lying around or want to use and hook it up with conductive tape. So this is just one little example we have. I like using transistors to make circuits on, uh, on paper because transistors are super weird they're super, super obnoxious to try to explain, but having kids make a diagram, make a circuit on paper, shows them how everything interacts really, really well, a nice visual format. Recently, we made some DIY speakers. Literally, we were bored and made speakers out of tape because somebody thought that it might be a nice idea on Twitter, so we gave it a try. What we did, we hooked up a little speaker like we have here in this picture to a stereo we got from Goodwill for $5 had some magnets from our warehouse and we plugged it all together and it makes sound. In fact, you can see it working in this video right here. So that's one of the many uh, different activities you could do that are a bit more advanced. Making your own speaker out of paper and tape is a really nice way to show kids how speakers work. And then the speakers work pretty well, actually, <laughs> for what they were, uh, especially when you pumped a lot of power from the old stereo into them. But you could also just hook up an iPod with a little adapter cable off Amazon. We have a link to that on our write-up. That works pretty well also. But it's a nice way to show the kids you can actually make these things that are around you, and they're not that complicated. It's tape, a magnet, and a sound output. One other project I like to do is a dark detecting circuit when we do things with teachers and students. Here's a diagram of us doing it on Lego with a light detecting resistor, an LED, a battery, and a resistor. But we can make the exact same darn thing on paper. There's not a whole lot there, 
But this is very similar to how a outdoor garden light might work or a outdoor uh, floodlight might work. A little light detecting resistor, an LED, and a power source. Simple, easy, straightforward, and they're making it basically how it works. Put your hand over the sensor, LED turns on. Take your hand away, LED turns off. Simple, easy, straightforward in a format, again, that is entirely up to them. I also like doing wearables with conductive tape. It's something that uh, makes me laugh way too much. Here's an example of a piano tie we made. Uh, there's an Arduino on the backside, but you touch the keys and it makes sound. Here's a much more interesting example. It's a lab coat we put together this afternoon for the presentation. We're just putting conductive tape, our maker tape, because it's a fabric tape, onto a shirt or a jacket. This is nice because I love when kids can make something they can wear. In general, I find wearable technology to be such a high interest activity for the kids because they can walk around and show it off. It's something that you know, they're wearing and everyone loves to show off what they wear. There's a lot of great real world applications that are coming out all the time for wearable technology. Everything from the black eyed peas of the Super Bowl a few years ago to the modern gadgets that we keep seeing people put on their wrists or their jackets or their arms all the time. But this is just a very simple version and a very safe version. And being a fabric tape, it works pretty well, but also comes off without making a mess. Uh, we'll show off that code a bit later here when I switch back to a Josh view of things. But uh, we also like doing 3D circuits as well. Instead of doing those two-dimensional paper crafts, we can make circuitry in 3D, such as an angry Dixie cup. This is my favorite workshop activity. It's literally a vibrating motor, uh, a battery, and some tape on a Dixie cup because it's fun to, again, watching teachers do silly things in workshops. But having the kids make things in three dimensions is really nice as well because there are circuits all around us in three dimensions. From the room we're sitting in right now to the city we live in, circuits are everywhere in three-dimensional shapes. We do things called origami circuits, which are, again, just fun three-dimensional circuitry projects. We can add lights or motors to them, but also I like having kids wire a house up easily using a, a cardboard box or a shoe box and quote, making a house, adding switches that they make themselves, lighting up rooms. In the past, people used to use conductive tape for lighting up doll houses. Well, we can do the same thing, but in a much easier format with LEDs and nylon tape. But also keep in mind, doing fun three-dimensional circuits doesn't have to be complicated. Wiring up a house is just a simple parallel circuit with some switches made out of paper. But it's those kids understanding how things work together and how that translates in the world around them, which really helps them understand things. I visited a local um, community college years ago when I was teaching, and one of these big warehouses they had set up was entirely for electrical engineering students. Kids are going to become electricians. And they had literally fake frames of homes set up where the students would come in and literally wire up rooms on these set up frames of two by fours. I thought that was really cool because it's real world experience and they could see how everything hooked together. Well, we can do the exact same thing with a shoe box on the small scale, or if you wanna get really crazy, throw tape over all over your classroom wall, because why not? It'll come off when it's done anyway, but have them light up the room with tape. Also, every now and then we do something really silly, such as making three dimensional vibrating paper crafts out of Pac-Man. Uh, my curriculum writer, Andy, sometimes gets very bored and some of the weird things we make come from him, his boredom. I, I came into work one morning to find that he'd made an entire Pac-Man line of vibrating paper crafts uh, in about an hour. So these are what those are. And again, these are just a three-dimensional shape with a vibrating motor and some conductive tape on them. It's fun, it's interesting, and it's different. If you do any sort of programming in your classroom, conductive tape makes it so much easier than trying to use things with breadboards. Whether you're using an Arduino, a Raspberry Pi, a Microbit, Circuit Playground, Adafruit Clue, a LilyPad Arduino, they work so easy with conductive tape. The circuit here on the right is something we threw together in two minutes and took a photo of for this presentation. Add power and those LEDs start lighting up and blinking. Just tape attaching to LEDs. It removes that complicated breadboard wiring, but also makes it very easy for troubleshooting. Nothing made me more frustrated in a classroom than trying to troubleshoot a jumble of wires at my student's desk. It looks like it works, but it wasn't working. This is a nice, easy visual format for them and for you to troubleshoot things. They're still making real circuits. There's nothing different between this, a circuit board, or a breadboard. It's just a nice, different, easy visual format that's easy to change, and also easy to take the expensive things off when you're done. Here's a microbit we just wired up with a couple of LEDs as well. 
Oh, uh, somebody asking, what's an Arduino? Uh, Arduino is a very common uh, microcontroller. It's, you can find them for anywhere from $3 up to $50 on Amazon. Uh, there's, if you search Arduino on Google, you'll find a, literally a billion projects on YouTube, Google, et cetera. It's just a very simple programming hardware setup um, that's really darn inexpensive. It's the cockroach of microcontrollers. They're literally everywhere. Um, the micro bit is just a nicer, more kid-friendly microcontroller format, which we can see in this picture here. We're just attaching tape to the micro bit. And the Adafruit Clue is a micro bit compatible, much higher end thing that's just coming up. But again, we just threw tape on it. It's all pretty simple. Uh, basically any sort of programming board from actually Makey Makey as well, you could wire in with conductive tape. So uh, the Flynn catalog, I don't know uh, Clifton because they just picked us up very recently. I know it's on their website. I'm not exactly sure what is in the Flynn catalog. They have not sent us one yet, but they did pick us up uh, this year. So we should be in there if it's the 2020 catalog. It's under maker tape somewhere in there. I wish I had a better answer. I know where it is on their website. Um, last but not least is linking conductive tape with other sciences, not just electronics, because I feel so often STEM tends to be electronics. Uh, yes, yeah, snap circuits as well, Clifton. You can totally use snap circuit parts. There's literally anything that you can, uh, has a conductive spot on it, you can just apply tape to. And I, I kid you not, if it's conductive somewhere, apply tape and you're good to go. Uh, we had somebody make their own TV antenna recently with our maker tape and plug it into a TV and it got quite a good signal off of it. Uh, so other sciences that are not just electronics. Chemistry. If you want to do a chemistry activity that's super electronic-y, make a penny battery. Uh, this is a super common project. We did this eight years ago, but I like taking this simple activity of combining pennies, vinegar, and zinc washers to make a simple battery circuit. And so use that with a uh, paper circus activity and you end up having the kids literally create their own power source to power their circuit. It's also cost next to nothing to do. As long as you have some vinegar around, it can you know, spring for a roll of pennies. But that's a really easy activity. If you Google this, you'll find tons and tons of really good videos. There's one from the King of Random. He has a really good penny battery video um, from years ago. Uh, which I showed in my classroom, but it's a simple activity. And it's just great to combine with paper circuits. You're making a chemical battery. Um, biology wise, I love good biology projects, especially when you bring in bioluminescent animals, uh, such as squid, fish, angler fish, like in this picture, but have the kids research and connect light with bioluminescence. Have them make their own light up animals. Again, it's easy, it's inexpensive. We made this anglerfish yesterday because, again, we were kind of bored at one point of the day and made an anglerfish. Um, and this is on our Twitter from yesterday as well. So, um, oh, now people are showing us a Clifton who aren't Clifton. My mistake. Uh, but we also have a really good germ unit as well that we put up um, a couple days ago. It's about viruses, bacteria, and fungus. We make three-dimensional viruses and fungus and germs, and they vibrate around. We have a nice little, gosh, it's three or four days worth of lessons just on germs doing three-dimensional circuitry. Uh, that's a, on our website as well, if you wanna check that out. Astronomy. I love good astronomy projects as well, because it's, it's all light, but the classic uh, project of creating your own constellation projector, use a toilet paper tube, LEDs, and cardboard. Have the kids make their own flashlight to go with that. Or if you wanna bring a microcontroller and you can easily animate a solar system, or make your own animated constellations with a couple LEDs. Super simple and easy, but the kids again are making the materials themselves and having that creation aspect that they can take home with them when they're done. Uh, geometry, I love doing 3D shapes with vibrating motors in them. Different shapes move differently. Uh, these are actually uh, shapes that the makers of Qubits put on their website recently for a very similar activity. Uh, they're the ones who actually made the uh, TV antenna a while back. But bringing in geometry with vibration and seeing how shape changes motion is a huge part of biology uh, and the world around us. So that's a really easy activity to do as well in a math classroom. So uh, any questions on your end? And by the way, this is another cool project on our website, this picture. We made our own battery tester with a clothespin, some tape, and an LED because we have a lot of batteries lying around our shop. Um, so oh, to answer that question, Jennifer Phillips, it's Flynn Scientific. Uh, there's also Nazco Wards. You can find us on Amazon. Um, if you want, you can find stuff on our website as well. 
Uh, but I can go back to that uh, list of people later if people want to, to look. It's Flynn Scientific is one of them, uh, one of the big catalogs. Uh, Demco, big library catalog, also has our stuff as well. And again, all these things um, that you've seen today, like this battery tester, are up on our website uh, as a step-by-step -step guide with a diagram. Um, so, oh, by the way, too, if you like uh, Patrick Stewart and St. Patrick, we made a nice card as well because we thought it was adorable. Uh, but if you want to uh, get a free sample of tape because you stuck around so long, uh, if you go to our website and search on our website for Hidden Brown Dog on our website, uh, there is a tape sample for zero dollars. It's free. If you use the coupon code uh, SCIC, it'll give you free shipping on that. So it's a free roll of five meters, 16 feet of tape uh, for nothing. I put a, a limit of 50 on those. So if anybody actually wants to get a free roll of tape in the US, that's how you do it. Otherwise, if you just want to try some other stuff we have on our website as well, there's a 20% off code using the discount code Cool Science. Um, they can also use as well to try other things out. We have full on kits and whatnot uh, galore. But, uh, and uh, um, Hidden Brown Dog is what it should be. So if I bring this up on here, Hidden, Hidden Brown Dog Giveaway. If you just go to the little search bar in the top of our website and uh, type in hidden, you'll find uh, right here, zero dollars is the only thing that should show up. Um, otherwise, I know they're gonna send out a email with a link as well. I can also throw that into the general chat as well. Uh, I can send a link there too, if you're still around. I'll do that in there. We'll do a little link. Here we go. I'm putting a link right there to everybody in the chat window. It's browndoggadgets.com. Um, and I sent a link out to everybody that should show up in your chat window. So I'm gonna switch back to, to me and I'm gonna actually copy paste that information to the chat as well. Uh, so. There we go. I typed everything in the chat window and we are going to Hmm. There we go. Stop share. There we go. Let me jump, jump on. There we go. So everything's in the chat window there as well uh, to make life easy for everybody because <laughs> links are easier to do things with. Um, that's for sure. So yeah, you can find lots of fun stuff there. And of course, on our website, there are all those diagrams, directions, activities, projects. And if you're interested in any other paper circuitry projects and activities, Google search around. There are so many fun free things out there as well from tons and tons of people. Shipping code says it's not available in my location. I'm also in Wisconsin. Um, hold on, let me quickly log in and change something. I'm gonna, we're gonna see if we can change that right now. Sorry about that. So if you have any questions, please let me know. <laughs> hey, Josh, we, we get that once in a while too. The code doesn't work. <laughs> I forgot to turn it on. Oh, I can't type and talk at the same time. And this is not my usual, uh, my usual computer. If you give me a second, guys, I am going to log in and change that for everybody so that uh, you're having a good time. So uh, we'll get that working here in just a second for everybody. <laughs> oh. Or I could leave the room and go to the other computer. I'll change that uh, and mm -hmm. get that going. Uh, so Josh, um, you know what we can do? Uh, you're welcome to hang on as a panelist and you could type in the codes later, you know, when, while we take a break. Sure. And then welcome. And there, I've noticed for a lot of the presenters, there's questions that come afterwards. Um, so, you know, I've been trying to encourage some of the panelists to stick around uh, because there's usually questions after and you're, you know, you're welcome to jump in and answer them. Sure. And somebody asked about, uh, Attaching it to um, a 3D printed plastics, of course. Uh, it really, really, really does work well um, uh, for attaching to that. Uh, just again, depends on the print you're doing. Uh, the more surface area, the better. 
uh, but it does uh, work pretty well on printed plastic. We've done a lot of 3D printing around here, um, but uh, yeah, it's not that tough to do. And sorry, just for the US, not to, not to all the world, because shipping internationally is a pain. If you email us, uh, we're happy to uh, give you some free samples if you pay for shipping internationally. It's just, it gets expensive really, really, really quickly on our end, especially when people are asking for a bunch of it. Um, and compared to copper foil, really there's copper foil, which is the, the standard go-to one, but the weakness of it and the fact it's not typically conductive on the bottom makes it a really, really tough uh, material to work with. Um, that's why we go with our nylon tape instead, because it's just that extra durability, that extra strength. I mean, I can sit here and, and yank on, on this piece all day, and it's not gonna snap on me, whereas copper foil would snap when I called it a, you know, a bad name. Uh, also, I, aluminum ductwork tape also works pretty well. Now I'll get that code fixed when I pop over to my other computer, where I can actually log in and remember my password to things. Um, we don't have an Australian supplier, unfortunately. I'm working on that one. Um, but uh, especially right now with everything going on, no one's picking up stuff um, from anybody at the moment, uh, which is really, it, it's rough uh, for finding new resellers when uh, no sales are happening to schools at the moment. So, so we, we can definitely get that. Uh, yeah, we can get something worked out for people in Australia as well. We, we do like the Southern Hemisphere. Um, but uh, we do ship things down there. We ship to pretty much everywhere from ourselves. We're always happy to work with people, especially giving you discounts if shipping is being really obnoxious for you. Uh, we do have some Canadian resellers as well. If anybody in Canada wants to avoid international shipping charges, uh, Spectrum Scientific, B&B, um, &B both carry our, most of our stuff. Uh, but that works pretty well. Oh, solar applications. Um, so... Again, it's just conductive tape on solar cells. We've used it for a couple of uh, different activities. We have a solar cockroach activity. It's a solar cell with a vibrating motor. Um, and uh, we just attach a motor to it with conductive tape. We've attached uh, LEDs to, and, uh, to solar cells really easily with conductive tape. Really just run tape from your solar panel to a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard or a wall and it works just fine especially for things that are under uh, six volts. You know, small, simple circuitry things, nothing too crazy. Uh, you wanna hook up a gigantic solar panel with many, many amps of power, that would just be silly. But for small activities, especially classroom things, home activities, it works quite well. Um, it really just works the same as a wire, just you can stick it to things and do fun applications with it. Uh, but you can find our solar cockroach on our website. Oh, not wasting tape. Um, we can pre-cut the tape is a good way of doing it. Uh, our tape comes with a, like a plastic backing on it. So you can just cut it and give people like, you know, a foot of tape per kid, especially if you know how much, about how much is going to be needed. Um, but in general, having the kids plan out their circuit ahead of time, drawing on a piece of paper, drawing a diagram that you, okay, I love stamping pieces of paper as a teacher, um, approved to move on to, the, to step two kind of thing. Uh, then you can make sure no one's doing things wrong or inappropriately before giving them the conductive tape. Uh, they'll still find interesting ways of wasting it, but uh, it's pretty inexpensive. So uh, the backing off the tape, uh, fingernails, it's one of those things, uh, one of my employees um, for the longest time had a hard time getting the backing off tape. And then one day he's like, oh, that's how you do it. And it's one of those weird things that just a fingernail works pretty well. Uh, with some younger kids, I'll just peel a little backing off, just a little piece off the corner off to get them going. Um, but that backing is a, is a, we went with the backing because we want to make sure teachers could cut little strips off and give them to kids, uh, which was really important for classroom use. Uh, but also it can be a little pain in the butt to get off every now and then. I, I totally agree on that one. I wish there was a better way of doing it, but that's, that's yeah, the best solution for a classroom setting. Uh, thanks, Roxanne. Josh, uh, thanks. This is fantastic. Just, I have just a couple quick questions for you. Well, one thing I think uh, I was following the chat. Um, I think people really appreciate that your your stuff is pretty low cost because school budgets are just so tough. Well, sure, and we make all of our resources free for people as well. So even if you have your own, yeah, I have a bunch of conductive tape from years ago or LEDs or whatnot. I mean, all of our resources are there to try out, and hopefully, you'll think of us in the future. Uh, if you ever need more stuff. If nothing else, I mean, we sell all of our parts a la carte. I have some teachers who are literally drowning in LEDs. Uh, so just buy tape from us. Um, but we try to make things easy and be flexible for everybody because I know budgets are 
so, so difficult uh, for everybody. And I've been there myself. <laughs> it was easier to start a small business than it was to keep teaching for me at one point, uh, <laughs> which, which, is, which was sad. Uh, but uh, I like making projects more than I like dealing with uh, that much paperwork. Josh, what, what, what uh, subjects and grades did you teach? I taught, uh, taught middle school, sixth, seventh, eighth grade science and social studies. Uh, I also taught overseas in Japan for five years, um, teaching English to elementary school kids, uh, which was interesting and fun. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I had to make up all my own lessons and activities and pretty much provide my own resources for my own classroom, which is why I'm very budget conscious. Um, uh, yes, we have conductive thread on our website as well. If you want to actually do real sewing, uh, conductive thread is not washable. It's uh, it, hand washable. There we go. If you hand wash things gently, you can wash it. However, conductive thread is it's an annoying thing. Like it works in certain situations. I can't tell you how many times we've put together like sewn conductive thread into a project and it should work, but it didn't. And we have no idea why. That's why I like sticking with very simple things with conductive tape because it just does. Uh, hey Pete, would you put your the jacket on and come show off the jacket? Oh, I'll get Pete away from, uh, from the other chair. I know you gotta turn it on. Um, but making quick wearables for kids or putting things on a backpack, it's just, I found when doing conductive sewing projects in a classroom or scouts or after school program, you're not teaching electronics, you're teaching sewing. And that's really obnoxious, um, really obnoxious for, for anyone. I've done that with some Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts and 4-H before, and it ends up being a sewing lesson of sewing, sewing buttons on, um, which is, yeah, not something I like doing. So here, we're gonna get Pete over here. Here's Pete with the jacket. Hey, Pete. Oh. There we go. And that took five minutes of work? Oh, maybe five. Maybe. Yeah, maybe five minutes to put that together versus sewing that on would be a couple hours of work. Uh, and if you want to get stuff in the UK, you could order from us directly. Again, I'm happy to give discounts for people ordering abroad. Uh, you just email us, Deborah. We're, we're always happy to, to give discounts in general. Thanks, Pete. Thank you. Oh, good old Pete. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, in the UK. Well, again, we're trying to get people in the UK to pick up stuff, but the market right now does not... Uh, yeah, really want lend itself to people picking up new products from abroad, especially. Uh, but uh, we're trying. But email us if you have questions. We're we're around. Great. Hey, Josh, thank you so much. I, I would say stick around. There's questions coming, so you can jump in and answer them as a panelist. Sure. Uh, thank you for a great presentation. I think you have a lot of fans. There's a lot of interaction. And we try. Yeah, it's fantastic.